In this video, I am going to go over a little bit about what CSS is. Okay, so I'm going into w3schools.com, uh, and if you just click on, you have Learn CSS right here, right below Learn HTML. You notice that it says CSS is, is a language that describes the style of an HTML document. Okay, and then it kind of goes over how you can use it. So if I look at this example right here, you notice that uh, inside of my head tag, we have a style tag and then a couple of attributes, a couple of HTML attribute names, and then in here, uh, whatever classes were specified uh, inside the curly braces for that attribute um, was changed. So if I change this guy to like 50, for example, and hit run, you see this guy just blew up to 50 pixels. Okay, uh, so so let's look at some, some practical examples. You notice there's a lot here, uh, and then there's a, a whole advanced sections um, there's there's a lot here okay uh, you can have very simple CSS just like this right here you know where, where you, you want to change the location of something or or how something looks or you know different things like that um, but it there's a lot that it can do it's actually a really powerful uh, language that can style stuff for you so uh, let's go into this this is from chapter 3 early on in our CIT 160 class. Uh, so if I ran this, I'll just hit Shift-Alt-C to copy the file path and paste it in here. Oh, it doesn't look like I copied it. Try that again. Paste it in here. You, you see I have this nice little, you know, I have a header and like five paragraphs, okay? So if I wanted to change some of the styling, first of all, I don't like how big this is. Um, I don't really like the colors or the spacing. So let's come back in here. There's a couple of different ways that I can do this. Okay, uh, there, there's a thing called inline styles. Okay, and you can do that by typing in an attribute on the opening tag of your HTML element. Okay, um, so I could say style and I could say font size is like 50%. Okay, if I ran this now, hit refresh, you can see, wow, that's like half the size that it used to be. Okay, um, I could also say 50 pixels. Okay, and obviously that's going to be massive. Okay, I think the default is somewhere between like 12 and 14. Um, so, anyways, that's one way. If I wanted to have multiple, let's go back to 50% here. If I wanted to have multiple um, style um, commands in here, I could just put a semicolon and then a space, and then I could also say, oh, and the color I want to be like pink. Okay, hit refresh over here. You can see now that's 50% the size and it's pink. Okay, and I, I could do as many of these as I wanted to. Okay, this is what is called an inline style. I never recommend that you use them. Okay, just leave them out. All right, the example that was in the uh, W3 schools is what I would recommend, where you have a style tag in your head in the head of your document uh, and you can specify different things. So here, if I isolate the paragraph, if, if I just say paragraph right here, this will isolate every single paragraph tag in my document, which will be all five of them, okay? And if I said font size is 50% here, uh, then I could come in here, hit refresh, and you can see, boom, they're all 50%, okay? This isn't super common that you're gonna, that you're gonna wanna do this, uh, but you can. I can isolate entire uh, HTML attributes. I could even isolate the entire body and say, you know what, I actually want the width of this to be 80% and I want the margin left to be 10%. Okay. In essence, what this will do is it'll give me 10% of padding on both sides and um, basically just 10% of space on both sides and it'll make the width of the body uh, fill up the rest of that. It'll take the width to be 80% and um, I'm going to shift that over 10%. Okay, so if I come back in here, I've saved that. If I refresh, you can see now I have 10% of space over here, 10% over here, and this is nice and centered. Okay, if I come back over here. I want to delete that. I don't care about that. Um, I could also say, let's say I, um, let's say I wanted my first paragraph to be kind of unique. Okay, the best way to do this is to add a class attribute. Okay. or an ID. You can use IDs here too. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, but let's say I added a class attribute and I could just say, um, you know, I could call this anything I wanted to. I could say unique paragraph. Okay. I could copy this, paste it up here. All right. Notice that this color hasn't changed at all. All right. If I want to isolate a class, it's 
starts with a dot. Okay, so I'd have a dot right there to isolate that paragraph, and then I could just say um, color is going to be green. Okay, and notice um, these colors are popping up because of an extension that I have in Visual Studio Code. But if I wanted to find a, a specific color, I could go over here and type in CSS colors. Okay, uh, there's even an HTML color picker. Okay, any of these that you click on. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to find you lots of colors. But notice that this, I have red selected right here. Uh, here's what it looks like. Here is this code. I can use that directly in my CSS. And you can see here are, here's all these different codes for all these, okay? I click on that one, they've all changed. And let's say I wanted to do this like dark green for that color, okay? I would copy that code, come back over here and say, you know what, I want this unique paragraph to be that color. And see, it found that. And let's say I wanted the background color, to be, and let's find a nice, beautiful color here. Let's make it like a light pink. And I would put that code right there, okay? I could save this, come back over here, hit refresh. You can see here's my unique paragraph, okay? The color will change the color of the text. And then I made the background color of this paragraph be that light pink. Okay, you can see I have my unique paragraph class right here, all right? And anywhere I put this, this class, it will apply to whatever is inside of it. So if I had, um, you know, let's say I actually put this class on the body of my document and hit refresh, you can see, wow, the background of the body is now this color and everything inside of it is 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 this color, that text color, okay? Um, and so it's a really powerful thing because I could put this class anywhere I wanted to. Uh, in addition to that, let's say I wanted two paragraphs to look like this, okay? Probably the most efficient way to do that would be to have a div, which is short for short for divider. And I would put these two paragraphs inside of this div. Okay. Let's format that nicely. And then in here, I would say class unique paragraph. And hit save. Okay. So if I look at this, I have this div with two paragraphs inside of it. And these other paragraphs aren't inside of it. If I hit refresh now, you can see that that class is now covering these two paragraphs. Okay, so this is just, I mean, this is just a simple example of how you can use a div, how you can use a class. Um, you can have as many classes as you want in here. You can have, you can have classes. Um, I, I could have this reference, you know, the second paragraph or, or different things like that. If you come back over here, um, you can look at all the all sorts of different things. You can see how you can style tables to look good. And notice if I look at this, it has attributes for um, the table, table head, and the table columns. Okay. And so I can do that uh, if I wanted to. I could say, you know, I actually want the body um, and all paragraphs to have a certain attribute, and I want, um, you know, their background colors to be red. Or something you know and then this would apply to all attributes that I'm stating I can do that with classes too I can do that with IDs let's go ahead and look at IDs real quick uh, if I wanted to reference an ID let's say um, this was an ID instead of a class uh, notice if I hit save right now and hit oops and hit refresh um, no, nothing changed you know it's because it didn't find an ID or it didn't find a class that was called unique paragraph okay this is now an ID and I could, I would just change this dot to um, this number symbol. Okay. If I refresh, I've now isolated that ID, um, and that's how you isolate IDs and and use styling on IDs here. Okay. Um, let's see, what else could we look at? Um, I, I think this is a really good place to start. Uh, you can look at padding to see how you can space things out. Uh, let's say I had a button. Let's go ahead and make a quick button. Uh, this is a button. I'll save it and come back over here and refresh it. You can see I have this very ugly button, okay? Uh, but I can come into here and say, um, let's say I have pretty button. I'm gonna call this class a pretty button class, okay? And I could I could isolate this button by doing this, but this would by default isolate all buttons in the document. And I don't really fancy that very much. So I'm gonna take this class name and say class, paste it in there, um, and then in here, uh, I could say width is going to be 200 pixels. Height is going to be, let's say, 30 pixels. 
you know what, let's say 50 pixels. Make this one massive button. Uh, let's say our padding is going to be, uh, let's say 10 pixels. Okay, now what this will do, the padding will give um, the stuff inside of here some space. Uh, we have our height set at 50 pixels, the width set at 200 pixels. Uh, I could set my font size to 150%, blow that up just a little bit. Okay, now one cool thing that I do want to show you, um, if I right click on this and hit inspect, um, you can see this button right here. Okay, notice when I hover over it, you, you, you see all these colors. There's that blue, that green. Um, and if I look at this, you can see, wow, there's blue and green and yellow and orange. Okay. There's my border. There's my padding. Notice it says 10, 10, 10, 10. It's because I set the padding at 10 pixels. Okay. Um, if I come back into here, I can see my padding's at 10. I could say 10 pixels and zero pixels. If I put in like two parameters right here, basically, then it'll just kind of go around the clock. You know, if, if I look at this button, you can see, um, it's 10 on top, 10 on bottom and zero on the sides. Okay, which we can't really see very much because there's not that much stuff there. All right, um, but if I wanted to, I could also add four parameters to this. I could say 50 pixels on the bottom and zero on the left and refresh that. And you can see, wow, there's there's some more padding there. You can see 10, 0, 50, 0. Okay, and so these, these developer tools can really help there. I can also see this class coming up over here. I could uncheck that to see what it would look like if I totally remove that padding or this font size or that height, or that width, okay? Um, and so you can kind of kind of play around with different things here. You can also add um, um, attributes here. If I just like double click, I could say color is red, okay? And then it changed my font color, okay? So these developer tools are helpful, uh, especially when things aren't working quite how you expect. Um, but yeah, let me just remove that our button there. Uh, but lots of different things that you can do. Uh, really, I could never make a video explaining all of these different things. Um, but but there's a lot here, okay, that, that you can kind of play around with. Uh, you can see this guy has rounded borders, and you can see how to do that. You can see how to do like dotted borders and different things like that. Um, you know, so anytime you want to do something with styling, be like, oh, uh, let's just go to Google and be like, HTML center something in the page or center a div or make something transparent or semi-transparent, you know, and anything that you want to do, just Google it. Um, and, and likely something from W3 schools will come up uh, showing you how, how you can do different things. Um, but yeah, if, if you have any questions, just let me know. I hope that this was at least helpful in showing you how to get started, you know, where you can isolate an ID or isolate a class. Uh, you should never use inline styles, kind of like I showed you at first, uh, but you always want to have a style tag up here in your head and have all of your styles there. Okay. The last thing that I should mention to you uh, is something that's very common when um, it is to have just a straight CSS file. Okay. If I wanted to do that, uh, let's say I, I could come in here, say new file, and I could just say test.css. I could name this as a CSS file. I could grab all these things in here, oops, and I'll just remove them from here and paste them in here, okay? So here's my CSS file, that's all there is to it. I just throw those in there. And then in my style tag, um, if we go to Google, I could say uh, HTML CSS file link, okay? And you see that comes up, W3Schools, And you see, we have this link right here. Well, st style sheet, and we'll reference a certain uh, style sheet. So I could come back in here and I would remove this. And instead of saying styles.css, I'll just say test.css. Okay. And I can do that because it's in this same directory. All right. And so if I come back to my file and hit refresh, nothing changed. Okay. And that's because even though I took the styles out of here, I'm referencing this. And so it still found all these classes, all these all these styles, okay? Because they were referenced right here, okay? Referencing that external style sheet, all right? So lots of different ways that you can do this, um, but I hope that this was at least helpful for you in seeing how to use CSS um, and, and a couple of different things that you can do with it.